Russians are well known for many things they're good at. They're obviously good at chess, they're really good producers of classical music, and they're also capable of consuming several shots of vodka without getting knocked out. But one often overlooked marvel that the Russians have is their incredible engineering prowess, particularly evident in their submarines. Meet the AS-12 Losharik submarine. This bad boy could dive deeper than any other sub in the world, at depths that can reach 3,000 meters or about 9,000 feet below seawater. In comparison, the deepest an American submarine can go is at limited depths of only 900 meters or 3,000 feet via the USS Dolphin. With that said, how on earth can Russian submarines dive deeper than US ones? What sort of engineering magic did they have to pull off? Let's find out. In order to understand how Russian subs are more capable in terms of diving capabilities than American ones, let's make ourselves dive deep and learn about the history of submarines as a whole. If you don't like history segments, too bad, because we're doing them anyway. The history of submarines is nothing short of a fascinating tale of ingenuity and technological advancement. They're basically underwater vessels designed to roam beneath the water surface. I mean, duh, right? One thing to point out, though, is that the science of designing submarines keeps evolving with every new upcoming generation. If you try and take a look at the first operational submarine ever built, you have to go back in the past. Actually, you have to go way, way back in time, way before tanks, planes, and aircraft carriers have been built. One of the earliest recorded designs for submarines was by Dutch inventor Cornelius Drebbel in the 17th century. Drebbel's sub wasn't quite that astonishing if you compare it to the subs you're familiar with. Let's be honest, it's literally a wooden rowboat covered in greased leather, and the deepest it can go underwater is less than 3 meters or 10 feet. Grandmothers can dive deeper than that. Her propulsion system? Well, it's consisted of about 12 oarsmen who propel the vessel underwater for several hours at shallow depths. Although, thanks to Mr. Drebbel, this concept of submerging people underwater developed over time. The first military submarine, known as the Turtle, was built by American inventor David Bushnell during the American Revolutionary War in 1775, and it was used to attach explosives to British ships. In all fairness, it demonstrated the potential of submarines in naval warfare, but it obviously lacked beauty in the design. I mean, my god, it looks like a German wine barrel. Moving forward in 1898, the United States Navy commissioned the USS Holland SS-1, which became the first commissioned submarine in the US Navy. Holland's design incorporated an internal combustion engine powered by gasoline on the surface and by electric batteries when submerged. And of course, we all know that throughout the 20th century, submarine technology rapidly advanced. From diesel electric propulsion to nuclear power and past two world wars, this invention was not going to stop advancing. It was the Cold War era where submarines actually flourished. After World War II ended, the race between the Soviets and the Americans began, and the finish line was, who is simply better? Both superpowers sought dominance in every aspect you can think of. The ideological aspect? Communism versus capitalism. The military aspect, who can destroy third world countries the fastest with proxy wars? You also have the technological and scientific aspect that includes space exploration and also naval exploration. This Cold War rivalry led to the incredible acceleration in the submarine development saga. And during the mid 20th century, we had the Soviet Project 611 nicknamed the Zulu class which were diesel-electric attack submarines, and they had the ability to dive to significant depths, reaching operational depths of around 280 meters, that's 918 feet. We also had the American Skipjack-class submarines that possessed the capability to submerge to depths exceeding 700 feet, or about 213 meters. Thanks to the Cold War, we also had the Soviet Alpha-class built in 1968, and although it's no longer in active service, this class was known for its extreme diving depth capability. Can you guess how deep these bad boys could go? They could exceed 900 meters or 3,000 feet in depth. In the 70s, the American Navy built a dozen of ballistic missile submarines, like the Ohio class that could go far below their predecessors. Fast forward to today, after the fall of the Soviet Union and the ending of the Cold War, the Russians are still more determined than ever to create the best submarine classes and enhance their technical naval capabilities. They literally built a frickin' blue whale and named it Yasin class. 
Since their birth in 1993, they have proven themselves as highly capable multi-purpose nuclear attack submarines in the Russian Navy. They feature advanced stealth technology and carry a mix of torpedoes, cruise missiles, and anti-ship missiles. And no one actually knows how deep they can submerge underwater, as this remains a top secrecy. The modern Russian Navy also has the Borei class in its arsenal. They excel in strategic deterrence, and they're equipped with intercontinental ballistic missiles. They can reach depths of 400 meters or about 1,300 feet with a speed of about 20 knots. Meanwhile, their arch nemesis, the United States, has modern submarines like the Virginia class, which exemplifies the latest advancements in stealth and versatility. Virginia class submarines are equipped with Tomahawk cruise missiles and are designed for both littoral and deep sea operations. These long dolphin looking machines can go up to, or shall I say down, to 800 feet, that's 240 meters. According to Wikipedia, they could submerge to around 1,600 feet, 490 meters in depth, allegedly. This is not confirmed to be the case, so we're not totally sure. The American Navy also has the Ohio class, which can go to depths similar to its cousin, the Virginia class, with speeds of over 26 knots. From this short analysis of modern Navy submarines, we can see that the Russian ones can go deeper with slightly lower speeds than the American ones. But why, you might be asking? In order to understand what makes a particular submarine go deeper than others, we have to dig deeper. We need to look at the designs and blueprints that go into making these subclasses from both Russia and the United States. Several factors impact a submarine's maximum diving depth, with hull materials and construction playing a pivotal role. Modern submarines often use high-strength steel, titanium, or advanced composites for their pressure hulls, engineered to withstand tremendous external pressures experienced at depth. The thickness and composition of the hull materials directly influence the submarine's crush depth, or in other words, the maximum depth it can safely descend before structural integrity is compromised. To minimize the impact of the immense pressure that can turn the entire crew into an omelette, when submerged deep for hundreds of meters underwater, engineers employed ballast systems and buoyancy control mechanisms. Submarines employ sophisticated systems to manage buoyancy throughout varying depths to ensure stability and safety under extreme pressure conditions. Comparative analysis of Russia and American submarine designs provides a captivating insight into the contrasting approaches and technologies employed by these two major powers in the field of submarine development. Russian submarine design has a rich historical legacy characterized by distinctive features that set them apart from their American counterparts. Historically speaking, the Bears have always designed their submarines, often showcasing a preference for double hull construction, not just a singular one. This design approach aimed at enhancing structural robustness and survivability. This design feature allows for an inner pressure hull that houses critical components and crew compartments surrounded by an outer hull that provides an additional layer of protection against external pressures and potential damage. Moreover, Russian submarines are renowned for their use of advanced materials such as titanium. You see, the power and almighty metal of titanium offers exceptional strength and corrosion resistance, contributing to the submarine's durability and longevity in harsh marine environments. This, in return, makes the submarines made by the Russian Navy not only penetrate the oceans deeper, but at a slower pace than what American submarines can ever do. Russia also benefits from her rich resources due to its natural geography. The primary source of titanium is titanium-rich ores, such as rutile and ilmenite, which are typically mined through open pit or underground methods. Russia possesses substantial reserves of titanium, particularly in regions like the Urals and Siberia. Once mined, the ore undergoes a series of refining processes to extract pure titanium dioxide which is then reduced using the Kroll process to obtain metallic titanium in the form of sponge. The sponge is further processed into titanium ingots of sheets through melting, casting, and rolling techniques. This is just a basic explanation because if we try to give you all the math that goes into this, this video will probably be longer than anyone can imagine. But it's fair to point out that even though this engineering philosophy made the Russian submarines be the number one divers in the world, this philosophy still comes with its own challenges. You see, the reliance on titanium can increase complexity in the production of submarines. Titanium is like money. It doesn't grow on trees, as it is relatively rare. 
It's also notoriously challenging to work with because it requires specialized manufacturing techniques, which can pose logistical and budgetary issues. One might also argue that while the double hull configuration can increase survivability, it adds bulk and weight to the submarine. And this can potentially impact maneuverability and operational performance, particularly in terms of speed and agility underwater. In contrast, American subs' designs have evolved along a different trajectory. A trajectory that is often characterized by a focus on steel alloys and single hull construction. U.S. Navy submarines have predominantly employed high-strength steel alloys for their pressure hulls, combining durability with relative ease of manufacturing and maintenance. The single hull design obviously makes it riskier to dive deeper as the pressure can get intense and might break the vessel. But this comes with its own benefits. The single hull design simplifies construction and reduces costs compared to double hull configurations, allowing for more streamlined production processes and operational flexibility. The U.S. can't really use titanium when building their hulls as they don't have the vast reserves that Russia has. Of course, America does have significant titanium reserves. They are not as extensive as those found in Siberia, for example. That's why it still relies on imports to meet a significant portion of its titanium demand, and this basically explodes the costs of using it in building submarines. Furthermore, you have to understand that several other factors come into play when it comes to the survivability of a submarine deep underwater. One of these factors is the welding techniques. Welding techniques directly impact the structural integrity of the hull, especially under extreme pressure at greater depths. Firstly, welding technologies employed in Russian submarine manufacturing are often more tailored to withstand high-pressure environments. The quality and precision of welds can significantly enhance the overall strength and integrity of the hull. Russian submarines have historically utilized advanced welding methods such as electron beam welding and unique steel alloys that are more resistant to pressure and corrosion. Electron beam welding, for instance, allows for deeper penetration and higher quality joints compared to conventional welding techniques. This results in stronger, more durable welds that can withstand the immense pressures encountered at greater depths. Secondly, the fabrication methods used in Russian submarine construction are designed to enhance overall performance and durability. Think of it like a video game where Russia used all its leveling points to max out the durability of its subs, while the United States used its points on stealth and speed. American submarines also benefit from highly advanced manufacturing and welding techniques. But here's the thing. Distinct design, philosophies, and material choices have significantly influenced their operational capabilities. American submarines typically prioritize stealth and flexibility as primary design considerations over achieving maximum diving depth. This strategic emphasis often results in specific design trade-offs that may lead to shallower operational limits compared to Russian counterparts. The American Navy is basically thinking like this. This is not a race of who can dive the deepest. It's a matter of how we manufacture a stealthy and efficient ocean hunter without relying too much on relatively rare metals. The focus on stealth in American submarine design is driven by the need to reduce acoustic signatures, making these submarines harder to detect by enemy sensors. This requires the use of specialized materials and fabrication methods that prioritize noise reduction over sheer depth capability. For example, Advanced composite materials and innovative coating technologies are employed to dampen sound emissions and minimize the submarine's acoustic footprint. While these materials enhance stealth capabilities, they may not offer the same structural robustness required for ultra-deep diving operations. This design philosophy influences the selection of propulsion systems and hull shapes, which may differ from those optimized for extreme depth performance. This comes in handy when we're talking about maneuverability and agility. However, as these attributes are crucial for evading detection and engaging in tactile maneuvers, the emphasis on a better submarine movement often means compromising on certain structural aspects that are paramount for deep-sea operations. Another factor shaping American submarine design is the optimization for specific mission profiles, such as intelligence gathering, surveillance, or special operations. I mean, we all know the American government loves nothing more than to spy on its enemies. Take, for instance, the USS Parsh, a highly secretive and specialized submarine used by the U.S. Navy for covert intelligence operations. The USS Parsh was known for its unique capabilities, 
including conducting classified reconnaissance missions, tapping undersea communication cables, and gathering intelligence on Soviet naval activities. During the Cold War, submarines like this played a critical role in monitoring Soviet naval movements, including the deployment of submarines, surface ships, and strategic missile submarines. The submarines operated stealthily beneath the ocean surface, leveraging advanced sonar and sensor technologies to track and gather intelligence on potential threats. The Russian Navy believes that the deeper a submarine goes underwater, the less chance it gets caught by adversaries. Russia's emphasis on deep diving submarines aligns with its Cold War era naval doctrine, which prioritized survivability and strategic deterrence. This nation aimed to ensure that its submarines could evade detection and operate effectively in deep ocean environments, providing a tactical advantage in potential conflict scenarios. Another factor that could explain the superiority of Russian submarines in terms of their stealth is Russia's legacy of technological innovation in submarine development. The Soviets didn't just try to perfect their iconic national anthem, they did their best to perfect every aspect of their military arsenal. This commitment to advancing depth capabilities has been a catalyst for significant research and development endeavors, particularly in the realms of materials science, propulsion systems, and underwater technologies. But no matter how sophisticated your submarine can be, Mother Nature always wins. Throughout history, the Russian Navy encountered significant challenges when operating at extreme depths due to the immense pressure exerted by deep-sea environments. One notable incident occurred with the K-129, a Soviet Gulf II-class ballistic missile submarine which sank in 1968 in the Pacific Ocean. According to the official Soviet Navy hypotheses, the K-129 slipped below its operating depth while operating in snorkel mode. The submarine imploded under intense pressure while attempting to recover a missile from the ocean floor. Another tragic example is the Soviet nuclear-powered attack submarine K-278 Cosmomolets that suffered a catastrophic accident in 1989. The submarine experienced a fire in its engineering compartment while operating at great depths in the Norwegian Sea. But what we can include our talking point with is that the ability of Russian submarines to dive deeper than their US counterparts can be attributed to several key factors. Firstly, Russian submarine designs often prioritize deeper diving capabilities, incorporating advanced hull materials and construction techniques that allow for greater underwater pressures. Additionally, Russian submarines may employ more robust reactor technology, providing greater power output and propulsion efficiency at extreme depths. Furthermore, the operational tactics and mission profiles of Russian submarines may differ, with a focus on deeper waters and longer duration missions beneath the surface. This strategic emphasis drives the design choices and engineering priorities of Russian submarine developers. It's important to note that submarine technology is highly classified and subject to continual innovation and development. Both Russia and US naval forces invest heavily in research and development to maintain their technological edge in underwater warfare. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful in answering your questions, please leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel for more. Also comment any thoughts or opinions you have about the topic in the comments section below. Thank you all for watching.